Hi students, welcome to session 4 of Fiber to Fabric. Students, in today's session we will learn about one another example of an animal fiber. In the previous session we discussed about wool which is an animal fiber and we discussed about its production and how we obtained it from other animals. So in today's session we will learn about another animal fiber called as silk. So let us start with this session and learn about silk. Yes, silk is an animal fiber produced by the silkworm. Silk fibers are very soft and lustrous like animals hair Silk that does not conduct heat, thus keeping us warm in winter. And that is why we wear silk and woolen clothes in winter season because it keeps us warm in winter. And what is the property which keeps us warm in winter? What is the property of silk? Yes, silk does not conduct heat. And that is why it keeps us warm in winter season. So we can say that silk is an animal fiber which is produced by silkworm or certain insects as building material for cocoons and webs. In commercial use, it is almost entirely limited to filament from cocoons which are produced by the caterpillars of several moth species known as silkworms. So basically we can say that silk is an animal fiber produced by silkworm. Now students, the silkworms produce silk, right? And they spit the silk fibers. So the rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk is called as sericulture. What it is called as? Yes, it is called as sericulture. So, silk is a filament fiber which is formed from the proteins secreted by silkworms. And silkworms are not actually worms, but they are the caterpillars, despite their common name. Humans have practiced silk production which originated in China for thousands of years and highly prized for its softness, insulating properties and strength. Silk is a natural animal product and therefore it is quite expensive. So students, making silk requires monitoring and feeding the silkworms constantly and a great deal of, uh, of effort results in a surprisingly small amount of thread. So how tough job it is to produce a silk. So basically, the origin of silk production and weaving is ancient and it is clouded in legend. The industry undoubtedly began in China where according to the native record, it existed from sometime before the middle of the 3rd millennium BC, that is before Christ. At that time, it was discovered that the roughly 1000 yards or 1 kilometer of thread or we can say that 1000 yards of thread that constitutes the cocoon of the silkworm could be reeled off and it can be spun and woven and silkworm early became an important feature of the Chinese rural economy. And that is why a Chinese legend says that it was the wife of the mythological yellow emperor called as Huangdi who taught the Chinese people the art throughout history. The Empress was ceremonially associated with sericulture and in this way sericulture that means the rearing of silkworms for obtaining silk came into existence. So how amazing it is. So basically silk is an animal fiber and it is very soft and lustrous 
and the major or the main property is that it does not conduct heat and keeps us warm and that is why the sericulture started it began by Chinese people so now let us see the life cycle of a silk moth yes the silkworm life cycle goes through several stages. Now, it consists of four stages. First one is the egg. So basically the silkworm life cycle or silk moth life cycle goes through several stages from egg to adult moth. And these stages are very important stages. So we will discuss about each stage in brief, in detail and then in the next session we will discuss about its production. So before discussing about its production, it is very important to know about the life cycle of silk moth. Right? So basically you can see here that first stage is the egg. Second is larvae. Third is cocoon. And fourth one is the adult moth. So this is just an overview. Now let us start with the first process of the life cycle of silk moth. Yes, egg. Egg is the first stage of a silk worm's life cycle. The female moth lays an egg about the size of an ink dot during summer or the early fall. So we can say that female silk moth lays about 300 to 400 eggs at a time. And the eggs hatch and the silk worms emerge. Which is followed by another process. So here you can see the picture. This is a picture of an egg, the female moth which lays an egg and it is very really true. It is actually about the size of an ink dot. So remember that the female moth lays an egg during summer or the early fall and the egg remains in dormant stage until the spring arrives. So the warmth of the spring stimulates the egg to hatch and that is why it is followed by another process known as larvae. So always remember this students that until spring arrives the egg remains in dormant stage and the warmth of the spring stimulates the egg to hatch and then it is followed by another process known as larvae yes so this is the larvae stage of the silk moth the newly born silk worm feeds on mulberry leaves you can see here in the picture this is a picture of a mulberry leaf so within three to four weeks it becomes an adult and it prepares itself for the next stage in its life cycle but what happens in the larvae stage, yes, the silkworm upon hatching is about one eighth of an inch and it is extremely hairy as you can see here, right? So it is one eighth of an inch after hatching and it is extremely hairy and so the young silkworms can only feed on tender mulberry leaves however during the growth phase means when it grows when it matures they can eat tougher mulberry leaves as well the larval stage lasts for about 27 days and the silkworm goes through five growth stage called as instars let me write it for you what it is called as the larval stage lasts for about 27 days and the silkworm goes through five 
growth stages. So these five growth stages are called instars. So during the first molting, the silkworm sheds all its hair and gains a very smooth skin, which is then followed by the stage of a cocoon. So once the silkworm secretes very fine filaments from two glands on its head, the filaments hardens. Why it hardens? Because it is made up of protein. So it hardens when it is exposed to hair, uh, sorry, exposed to air. So this happens in the larvae stage and then the cocoon forms. So basically we can say that cocoon is a stage in which the larva spins silk threads around it to protect itself from its predators. So now you can just imagine that why larva spins silk threads around it. It forms a web-like structure to protect itself from its predators and that is why this formation or spinning of silk threads around itself is the stage called as cocoon. So the larva traps itself inside the cocoon to order in order to pupate because after that it will form or it will be produced into an adult moth. So the color of the cocoon varies depending upon what the silkworm eats as you can see here, right? So it depends upon what the silkworm eats and that decides the color of the cocoon and it can range from white to golden yellow. So this is the white image of the cocoon. The second molting occurs inside the cocoon when the larva turns into a brown pupa where it takes about two to three weeks for the pupa to metamorphose into an adult moth to form or to produce an adult moth. So always remember that the larva traps itself inside the cocoon in order to form a pupa or to pupate. So the silkworm deposits filaments in layers through figure of age movement of the head forming the cocoon as you can see here. So it deposits the filament in layers and in which figure? Yes, it is in the figure of eight movement of the head which forms the cocoon. So basically the silkworm takes three to seven days to prepare the cocoon and it is formed of about 20 to 39 concentric layers made up of single thread. So how amazing it is. So what happens that inside the cocoon the silkworm transforms itself into the chrysalis. What it is called as? Chrysalis. So what is it? It is called the pupa stage. It is a pupa stage in a moth's life cycle. Right? So always remember that inside the cocoon the silkworm transforms itself into a chrysalis which is called the pupa stage in a moth's life cycle and then it gets converted into a moth. So silk threads are obtained from the cocoon of the silkworm. Okay? Not from the moth but silk threads are obtained from the cocoon of the silkworm and then it is followed by adult moth. So once the adult moth comes out of its cocoon, its purpose is to find a member of the opposite sex and mate. Basically, males are larger than females and they are more active. So this forms the adult moth. So 
they flap their wings rapidly to attract the females and within 24 hours of mating the male moth dies while the female lays abundant eggs oh how amazing it is now see just listen carefully once the adult moth comes out of its cocoon its, its purpose is to find a member of the opposite sex and mate and as we discussed that males are larger than females and they are more active so what they do they flap their wings to attract the females and within 24 hours of mating the male moth dies while the female moth lays abundant eggs after which she also dies and thereon a new silkworm life cycle begins so this way the life cycle of a moth takes place how stunning it is right so we discussed about all the four processes and this is just an overview of life cycle of silk moth how it looks like how the eggs look like how the larva takes place then cocoon from which silk threads are obtained and finally into an adult moth so silk is a natural protein filament which is produced or which produces a caterpillar of butterfly like silk worm it is very strong soft thread which is produced by a caterpillar before turning into a pupa also called as chrysalis so students there is an amazing fact about silkworm that it takes about 110 silkworm cocoons to make one good silk dye so how tough job it is the length of the thread making the cocoon may range between 600 and 1500 meter even silkworm is the most widespread insect manufacturer on the earth it produces filament for satin organza and chiffon etc the noblest and most expensive silk is reeled off and it is not boiled so its thread is pulled out from inside the cocoon and to receive 3 kilograms of silk thread it is necessary to provide caterpillars with leaves of approximately 30 mulberry trees 30 mulberry trees means just to receive 3 or just to obtain 3 kilogram of silk thread 30 mulberry trees are used are to be provided so in the same way artificial silk like uh, this natural silk is obtained artificial silk was invented in 19th century before that before that only natural silk was used for fabrics manufacturing and today in India women are significantly involved in various kinds of industries related to silk production and these are trading of silk worms reeling of silk from cocoons and processing of raw silk into fabrics and by their enterprise they contribute to the nation's economy like China leads the world in silk production India also ranks among the leading silk producing countries how amazing it is so now let us revise about this life cycle of a silk moth yes this female silk moth lays eggs from which larva hatch which are called as caterpillars or silk worms they grow in size and when this caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life history called as pupa it first weaves a net to hold itself and then it swings its head from side to side in the form of figure of eight as we saw in the picture as you can see here so during these movements of the head the caterpillar secretes fiber which is made up of protein 
which hardens on exposure to air and it becomes a silk fiber. Soon the caterpillar completely covers itself by silk fibers. This covering is known as cocoon. So the further development of moth continues inside the cocoon and silk fibers are used then for weaving silk cloth because we can obtain silk fibers from the cocoon. So can you imagine that the sol soft silk yarn is as strong as comparison or as comparable to a thread of steel? Yes, the silk yarn or also known as thread is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. There is a variety of silk moths or there are a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another and the silk yarn they yield is different in texture. In texture means some are coarse, some are smooth, some are shiny, etc. Thus, tessar silk, muga silk, kosa silk, etc. are obtained from the cocoons spun by different types of moths. So, the various types of silk which are produced by different types of silk moths are tessar silk, then Muga silk and Kosa silk. So these are various types of silk which are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. So the most common silk moth is the Mulberry silk moth. The silk fiber from the cocoon of this moth is very soft lustrous and elastic and it can be dyed in various beautiful colors. So sericulture or culture of silkworms is a very old occupation in India and India produces plenty of silk on a commercial scale and that is why we get silk cloths to wear in the winter season which keeps us warm in winter. Right, so this was all about the introduction to silk and animal fiber, which is an animal fiber produced by silk fiber, silk worms, and we discussed about the life cycle of silk moth. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. We will meet in the next session in which we will discuss about the production of silk. Till then, keep enjoying. Bye bye.